What's up, world? I'm back. A long motherfucking week off, but I'm back. At least it seemed like a long week for me personally. Some of y'all motherfuckers might be like, yo, I thought you just hit us with a recent podcast. What the fuck, man? You got to slow that shit down, bro. I can't keep up. I'm sorry, okay? Uh, But if it's the opposite and you're like, yo, what the fuck, Isaac? I thought you were going to be dropping these shits more consistently. Yo, I am with you, bro, okay? Trust me, I fucking understand. But, you know. Your boy a little bit busy between work and school and, you know, just overall life. So I'm trying to do these as consistently as possible. Uh, Hopefully what I'm trying to do more than anything, though, is quality over quantity. Right. So hopefully that for those of you who have been looking forward to me dropping this new podcast, that you took the time to listen to the last one, the last four in general, five, I guess. But um, especially this last one that I had with my colleague Manuela, because honestly, real shit. That podcast just made me realize how radically different it is with just me here and with somebody else to bounce ideas back off, uh, back and forth off of. Right now, I'm not trying to say I'm not diminishing my quality or just me personally, because trust me, your boy has sit here and fucking drop some shit for an hour just by myself. Right. So much as I am trying to say that I definitely did appreciate her coming through and I am looking forward to having future podcast guests as well, which are definitely in the works. Right. Some of them going to be fellow academics like myself. Others, on the other hand, motherfuckers haven't stepped foot on a state sanctioned educational learning facility until they're fucking since I should say not until, but rather since their prison sentence, if you will, came to an end. Now, I'm going to get into this whole discussion about why I'm referring to school in, as, in terms of a prison here shortly. OK, but before I do. I have to say this for those of you who have not listened before, who are just following along for the first time. Maybe you have no idea who I am. Got to qualify it every single time, man. Follow your boy on social media, okay? Facebook, it's uh, facebook.com, IceMFNice13. Instagram is uh, at IceNice underscore El Profe. And I mean, I say the Twitter, but I don't fucking use it, bro. So, I mean, you can follow that shit if you want. But I mean, maybe one day I'm going to get on there because I keep keep hearing that it's it's one of the most powerful ways to spread our messages. But if you insist, it's OG underscore ice nice 13. And I'll fucking I'm going to make it a point to get on this. It's just so much social media, bro. And I'm not really used to it that much in the first place, aside from Facebook. So trying to keep up with all of it is it, it's certainly new to this podcast. But, yo, we got to do what we got to do to make this fucking dream work. Right. So with that said, there's a few qualifying remarks that I want to get to. Just out of the way in general before I get on with the whole point of what I'm going to be talking about today. And the first of which is this, I promise you, is a philosophy podcast. okay? and I recognize that I haven't it's not that I haven't been talking philosophy so much as I haven't been explicitly referring to it as philosophy. One of the instances I'll talk about, for instance, rather, is the whole logical fallacies. Look, man, I'm going to get to the logical fallacies. We're still talking about logical fallacies. If this was my this is obviously in like my philosophy class itself. We'd have been done with the logical fallacies a long time ago, right? We'd have been moving on to other shit, the kind of shit that I'm going to be talking about today, for instance, okay? But, you know, this, my class in general, it's actually one of the complaints that I get to which you'll hear the response here shortly, right? But definitely my mind as a whole, it's just the way that it works, bro. I fucking bounce back and forth between, you know, topics like it ain't no thing, right? So this whole idea of linearity I'm, I don't fuck with it, bro. Like, I understand linear time in the sense that it's day, night, day, night, month, month, year, right? But this conception that we can only be moving forward, I, that's what I don't fuck with. Right? I take a more indigenous stance when it comes to temporality and time and space and even fucking land, bro. Right. And what I mean by that is I just bounce back and forth. There is no it's, it's just all time. Right. So if I'm discussing a topic that I discussed a week ago in my philosophy class, but especially in this fucking podcast, yo, that I discussed five topics ago and suddenly bring it up, it's because that's how my mind puts the shit together. Right. And also because, well, I mean, come on, bro, step your fucking game up. Right. It's not that difficult to keep up with more than one topic at one time and be like, oh, shit, this motherfucker talked about this the last time. And now I'm starting to see how it relates. At least that's how I feel that it is in my mind. Right. So. Again, explicitly stating that this is, in fact, a philosophy podcast, right? And that occasionally I will explicitly straight up teach you like the actual fucking philosophy, right? But more often than not, I am going to teach you my interpretation of the philosophy, not because I don't understand the former, but I don't give a fuck about it, at least not for this podcast, right? If you're in my class, then yeah, for sure, I'll teach you the fucking A through Z about what the philosophical theory states, right? Uh, But as far as this podcast is concerned, man, my biggest concern is demonstrating 
how the philosophy, if anything, relates to the world that we're living in, bro. Now, there's no difference between this and my actual class itself, because the whole point for me, at least one of the points when I'm teaching in my classes is to try to demonstrate to students how the philosophy that we're learning is actually relevant to their everyday lives. For those of you who are keeping up with this in a more linear matter, if you will, um, you'll recognize this right away with the most recent Instagram post that I have up. And it's talking about the imp why, is, why is this important, right? Um, the idea here is that I'm talking about why what I'm teaching in my philosophy classes is important, okay? And one of the reasons that I didn't mention, and I'm telling you straight up right here through this podcast, is, bro, you, many of us, right, are taking these classes and we're just fucking in there learning shit that we don't even care about in one instance, right? And for those of us who are listening to this podcast only, who never stepped foot in my class, at least not yet, right? Um... I, I have to give you something that's important because, well, what the fuck? For one, how am I going to differentiate myself from any other motherfucker out here that's looking for your attention? But two, and on some more real shit, especially for those of you who take my class, dude, you're in there for 50 minutes, an hour and a half, three hours if you take a Thursday night or Saturday class this semester, okay? And as the semester progresses in my classes, but definitely with these pro with these podcasts as the, as the series just itself progresses, I hope that I can impress upon you the importance of realizing that that's just time that we, we're not going to get back, man, right? And it, it, it's simple to look at these kind of issues and say, well, it's just three hours of my life. It's just 50 minutes of my life, right? I, I, it's just one day out of my life. But, yo, this shit adds up, man. And, you know, when the time inevitably comes for us all, the last thing that I want is for you to sit there and be thinking. I know it's the last thing that I fucking want for myself. Right. Assuming that we're even fortunate enough to have this happen to us in the first place. But I definitely don't want either of us to be sitting there and thinking about all the time that we wasted on some bullshit, bro. It's fucking wasted time on things that we didn't even care about. My philosophy class or podcast included. OK, so again, going back to the whole teaching of the theory shit like, yeah, I can do that and I will inevitably. Right. Whether it's through his podcast form or through another format. But more importantly, what I'm trying to get to you, the listener and definitely my students who are listeners is ask yourself, why is what this fool is fucking talking about right now so important, right? In my classes, why is what he's teaching me right now so important? And more importantly, is it going to help benefit you in any way in the future? Because if it's not, then I'm just wasting your time, bro. And as you know, these lectures, as rather uh, the lectures in the classroom for sure, but as these podcasts in general continue, I'll get into this idea of, you know, how wasting one's time is perhaps one of the greatest evils that we do to ourselves. Right. It's one of to use the language from the previous podcast. Well, not the previous one, but uh, not in sequential order. OK, I'm bouncing back here uh, to the podcast that I did alone, the solo cast, if you will. Not the one with Manuela, but I was discussing self-destructive patterns of behavior. I mean, bro, could there be any more fucking self-destructive pattern of behavior than just mindlessly wasting one's time? Right. So when you're in my philosophy class or listening to these podcasts, that's, that's the last thing I want to be doing, bro. Like I do value your time. Right. And if I'm just wasting it with teaching you shit that, that I don't think is important, then I fucking wasted it. OK, so again, specifically with this podcast, but also certainly with my class, I'm trying to teach shit that we can apply to our everyday lives that help us hopefully understand the ways in which we're being fucked because there are plenty of them. Right now, I'm not trying to get into some Alex Jones shit just yet because I got my boy coming on inevitably and we're going to talk about that shit. Right. Um, but I'm talking I'm, I'm talking about on a more personal level, like the shit that we do to fuck up our lives. Right. And much of it is because of our own conscientious decision. I refuse to fucking believe otherwise, right? But, yo, if we're being honest, a lot, a lot of it has to do with the way we were educated. Or, to be more specific, the way that we were miseducated, bro. Like, if you ask me personally, oh, the miseducation of Lauryn Hill, one of my favorite albums of all time. Miss Hill in general, one of my favorite hip-hop artists of all time, right? But her album, yo, the miseducation of Lauryn Hill, I mean, that shit applies to us all, yo. We all spent, for instance, 12 years minimum. That's the sentence part comes up. You know, you started to realize making the connection to the beginning of the podcast, how the language of sentencing in prison comes into play. Yo, we all spent a 12 year sentence in these fucking state sanctioned learning facilities. OK, and the question is. Yo, what the fuck did we learn for real of anything that's of actual genuine importance, right? This is, just so we're clear, coming from an educator, A, and B, what we refer to in the business, the teaching business, as a loving critique, okay? It's a critique, no doubt, but I c it comes from a place of love, right? The place of love here being just how much I fucking love and value education, you know? Like, I really do. Um, sometimes I think to myself, like, why the fuck did I try to become a teacher for, right? I could have just been something else and took it in the fucking quote-unquote easy way out. 
And the answer always is simple because I love to fucking teach, bro. It's kind of self, it's kind of fucking self-righteous, I know, right? But I've always been this way. Uh, I love to learn. I love to just teach new shit that I've learned. I love to always be in the process of either gaining knowledge or spreading knowledge, okay? And when I see the ways in which our education system is not living up to the standards that I personally have for it, of course that shit's going to make me mad, bro. Of course I'm going to get upset with that. That doesn't mean that I don't think education is valuable. Fuck no. Fuck all these fucking Donald Trump Jr. clowns who are saying shit like loser teachers and fucking all these alt-right fuckheads that are trying to teach us that all... Well, you know what? To be fair, some of it is, is, is grounded in reality. But not all college professors are fucking bad, yo. This is anti-intellectualism at its finest and a, a logical fallacy, the likes of which we've already discussed, right? Um, but... You know, so when I see that these educators, whether it be at the public school level or at the collegiate level, are not living up to the standards of what I personally believe an education should be, of course I'm going to get mad and of course I'm going to talk shit and of course I'm going to say things like, yo, public school, it did not feel like I, w at least in retrospect, because at the time being, I was just a fucking young scappy, little slappy wag, right? I didn't know shit. Um, but now in retrospect, I start thinking to myself, what the fuck, what did they teach me of actual importance, yo, for real, Okay. Christopher Columbus, fucking rapist, murderer, torturer. He did all kinds of fucked up shit. And they taught me that this fuckhead was the, 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 the person who founded the Americas. No, that's a lie, right? Um, you know, geography. Like, yeah, I guess geography is important. But going back to this more indigenous understanding of time and how it relates to, to space as well. This fucking land right here, you know, you taught me that it's America, bro. It's not America. It's, it was not America to the indigenous people who were here first, right? It's Turtle Island. It's Anuwak. It's Simanuwak. It's all sorts of other indigenous names that we don't fucking name it, okay? And how this relates to education in general, specifically the twelve, uh, the, the K through twelve, is the just the blatant misinformation that's being spread in these in, in in these schools, and it makes people like myself, who are highly skeptical by nature, start to question things like if they lie to me about something as arbitrary as that. What the fuck else have they lied to me about? All right. And then, you know, going back to the whole, you know, aside, what, what did they teach me? What I'm saying here is, again, it's not trying to shit on academia or knowledge gaining processes in general. OK, so much as it's trying to say that aside from mathematics and learning how to read and I say learning very loosely. Right. I don't I don't recall anything of importance that was taught to me in, in elementary school, for instance. Right. Uh, the reason I scare I scare quote reading is because they even though they taught me how to put two letters together next to each other and make sounds out of them and then bunch those letters up into words and make those words into giant sentences and turn those sentences into paragraphs and books and all that kind of shit. That doesn't mean that I learned how to read. Reading is comprehension. Right. So you can put all the words together. But if you don't understand what is being told to you, if you don't understand the way metaphors work and the way that they're used to, you know, convey knowledge that possibly could not be conveyed at the given time because the people and the power structures in place would have, you know, taken uh, they would have enacted revenge on the person who wrote it. If you don't understand how this works, you don't really fucking know how to read. I mean, again, you can read, but there's a big difference between knowing how to read and, you know, be, being able to pick up these you know, these metaphors and these allegories and, you know, be able to comprehend the text in a way that can make an actual difference and importance, uh, an important difference, I should say, in your lives and being just being able to sound shit out like fucking hooked on phonics. Right. So when it comes to this miseducation process and why I'm so mad about school and I, 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 I say shit about it like it's a fucking prison sentence is because that's that's how I feel about it, man. I was forced, compulsively forced and spare me this whole fucking slick uh this fucking sneak tip nazi shit that says well no one forced you to go to school bullshit they did because if i didn't go to school my parents would well my mom right she would have been coerced uh at the edge of you know at, uh, by the end of the uh, of governmental force to pay for the the money that she that the government lost out the school lost out for me not being in school that day right they compel us to go into you know these educational learning facilities from a young age okay and yeah we can drop out inevitably when we're old enough to do so on our own but uh, that shit comes at an expense, too, because we realize that you're not going to get very far in this capitalist society that we're living in the United States of America with not so much as a high school diploma, right, or a GED. So it's kind of like they hold you, they're, they're coercing us in a way. They say they make us go to beginning when we're so young, we don't really have a choice and we don't even know what the fuck is going on. But they keep us there under the fear that not being there is going to negatively influence us in the future, right? So while we're there, the question then becomes, well, what the fuck are you teaching us? Because if it's just shit, like I talked about with Christopher Columbus and social studies, right? You're not really doing me a favor, bro. And this is not so difficult 
a, a realization when you're, you know, a fucking 17 year old kid and you're looking forward to graduating high school and being done with it. But when you're a fucking 30 year old man and you're starting to realize just how little you know about the world, this shit is becomes very concerning really quickly, man. OK, which will bring me into the second part of, uh, uh, of, of the purpose for today's podcast. And it's just to clarify in further detail a lot of the ideas that I discussed in the, in the previous podcast. Right. And before I continue, I one thing because I was listening to it, I listened to it a couple of times. Right. And one thing that. I feel needs to be further clarified is this understanding that I'm tr- or at least this the, what I believe to be this understanding that I was attempting to pontificate. And and that's not the case, right? I'm not trying to pontificate to anybody. I'm not trying to preach to anybody, right? If anything, you should understand that I'm fucking sitting in a room by myself, fucking talking to a camera with the hope that somebody is going to be listening on the other end, right? So realistically, it it in a more real in a more realistic sense, it's kind of like I'm just talking out loud to myself. And even though I say you and we, I really mean fucking me and I, bro. Right. How much of these self-destructive patterns of behavior, for instance, that I personally have still to this day. OK, how many of these self-destructive patterns of behavior that I am still attempting to overcome? Some I've completely overcome, thankfully, but they're very few and far between. Right. The majority of one, the majority of them rather are ones that I'm still struggling with here to this day. So, you know, when I was talking about, you know, uh, for instance, th- these things that we do to try to distract ourselves from the pain that we're experiencing. Bro, I'm talking about my fucking self, right? I'm not trying to put you down. This is like some sneak tip, 13th step of recovery type shit going on where we start to judge people who aren't our, who aren't at our level of recovery yet, right? No, that's not the case, man. The last thing I'm trying to do is scare anyone away from recovery because I make them feel guilty for the shit that they're going through. Like, fuck no, dude. I'm talking out loud to myself, right? And then if you get to listen, hopefully it means something to you and hopefully it's important enough to help you not only make better sense of your of the world, but your place in it, right? Uh, another instance that I was talking about is like when I said shit like, it's maybe because your mommy didn't love you or maybe because your mom did love you. Like, bro, that's like some... I say it in, in, a, in, a, in a two-way sense, the first of which being that, of course, it's meant to be facetious, right? Like, that's a very powerful example. No one here wants to think that their mom didn't love them, myself included, right? But at the same time, I say it with a sense of truth, right? Like, fuck, man. Like, when I was listening back to that podcast, again, this is the part that r- this part really, really, really stuck to me. The solo cast, again, just so we're clear. And it's when I started talking about maybe because your mommy didn't love you. Maybe your parents love you too much. And now they expect it too much of you. Like, bro, I fucking feel that shit on both fronts. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't bring me any joy to talk about it because I start to realize like, damn, dude, was I really loved? Was I loved so much? That now I've become coddled. And now because of that coddling that I've experienced as a young person, I fucking have these limits and these ceilings in my head of what I can be and what I can't be and what I can do, what I can't do unless someone is there with me or someone's not there with me. Like, that's me talking to myself. But, you know, again, hopefully that it resonates with you in such a way that it's important enough where it can actually, you know, make help you make sense of what you're going through as well. Right. Ultimately, though, going back to the whole idea is it's not meant to be a pontific uh, a pontification. Right. It's meant to be like, yo, real shit. We are all in this together. There's a great fucking Queens of the Stone Age lyric. I forget the name of the song, but the lyric essentially goes. Um, does anyone ever get this right? And the dude is talking about life in general. At least that's what I picked up from it, right? He's talking about life in general and how you can have the best parents in the world, the worst parents in the world. You can have the best experience, the worst experience. We're all going to fuck up. We're all going to do shit wrong. We're all going to develop terrible fucking ways of coping with just the constant assault. If you ask me, it's an assault. I love it, but it's a fucking assault existence, right? all the different ways that we've picked up to cope with this shit right so yeah and then you know to tie that into the whole school because now you're like what the fuck this fool is talking about school now he's talking about his mommy issues like nah, there's a reason there's a rhyme or reason i'm fucking telling you keep up motherfuckers right the 50 cent lyric I, you say that i talk a little too fast but if you listen a little faster i wouldn't have to slow it down for you or some shit like that right um they could have been teaching me shit of real importance in school, like how to properly communicate with my loved ones, right? I'm going to straight up fucking cite all the Dead Prez lyrics right now from the song Day Schools because, yo, that shit, it's had so much influence and impact, not just on my own personal life, as you can see over here with the little works that I'm, wor- the, the little words that I'm working on right now with my own, you know, uh, uh, projects on the side of, uh, of this podcast, right? But 
it my school everything man my personal life my school academic life i should be more specific right this song by dead prez day schools has just so deeply fucking influenced my understanding of the world right so specifically here in regards to the school their song day schools is talking about man they schools, nam namely these states, the state sanctioned institutional learning facilities that were put into place way back in the day when they were looking just for ways to try to teach little brown kids like myself how to act more proper like the European people who came and colonized this country. Right. They don't teach us anything of importance. Like, again, how to properly communicate with our loved ones, our family, how to do shit like balance a fucking checkbook, how to do shit like, you know, um, properly process anger and sadness and fear. OK, all these emotions that we have just by virtue of being human. They didn't teach us shit like, you know, what the world really is like, for instance. They didn't teach us shit about reality. They didn't teach us philosophy in general. If I could be so bold about it and just outwardly say it. OK. And the whole time that I was forcefully compelled to be there, they could have been doing that. And instead, they chose to fucking teach again about bitch ass Christopher Columbus, man. Which, again, it's not a big deal when you're when you're 17. At least it wasn't for me. I didn't give a fuck. I couldn't wait to get out of high school. And I was not one of those people who fucking missed it. I was fucking glad to be gone. Right. But 30 year old me started to get really fucking upset when I realized, yo, I am mad deficient in life skills in general. I don't mad deficient in coping skills. I'm mad deficient in money management skills. I'm fucking mad deficient in interpersonal communication skills. Like, I'm just a deficient person. I'm not a complete person. And I, it sucks that I'm fucking realizing this at 30 years old because how much more fucking time on this rock do I got, bro? If I'm fucking lucky, if I'm lucky, 50, 50, right? And how much of that time is going to actually be in a capable, I say scare quote capable because I'm not trying to be ableist here, but I'm just saying like, inevitably I'm going to be so old where I'm not trying to be ageist either, but it's just the fucking truth of the situation, man. I'm going to be older elderly where shit like you know what i did with my finances oh you know i can't even say that because fuck my biggest fear right now is to end up like one of those fucking dudes at walmart like okay thank you fucking 80 years old shaking your hand checking your receipt because they didn't fucking properly plan for re retirement when they were younger right that that that's my biggest fear is like why the fuck was i not taught this shit when i was in third grade fourth grade fifth grade like yo isaac when you get older there's gonna be this shit called fucking retirement and if you're not prepared for it you're gonna be left to either try to fucking work until your body physically quits on you or be reliant on the sympathy of other people to survive because if you have not prepared for either one of those situations you're gonna fucking die hungry and in destitute okay so you right here now third grade isaac need to start thinking about ways to fucking get through in this capitalist society in such a way that you can be taken care of not just your entire time going up to your 80s but when you're actually in your 80s and beyond right but they didn't fucking teach me that bro they taught me fucking christopher columbus they taught me the fucking the revolutionary war man i don't give a fuck about that shit i don't care right i care how the fuck to communicate with my girlfriend right now. I care with how to communicate with my daughter, with my own mother, right? Again, these are all terrible skills that I didn't fucking, that I didn't have in my 30s. And I woke up one day like, dude, is this going to be fucking the rest of my life? Am I going to be living the rest of my life operating off of these basic fucking, this basic understanding of what life is, about reality is, and then fucking trying to, mask the pain that comes with all these fucking terrible decisions that I am making that I have made with these fucking terrible self-destructive patterns of behavior that do nothing more than placate the temporary the, rather not temporary but the, the they placate this feel these pains of these feelings of pain that I'm experiencing in a temporary sense right only to have them inevitably wear off and seek to replace them with another fucking self-destructive pattern of behavior so I can just continue in this cycle of just not even living, bro, just fucking or uh, just existing, just existing from one second to the next, hoping that I'm not in fucking pain and that in so doing, I will be able to experience just a little bit of happiness, just a little bit of happiness. Right. Because if I'm already fucking tired of doing so at 30 years old. How the fuck am I going to be when I'm 80 years old, 50 years old, 40 years old, bro? Like, no. And I started to realize, man, like, I got to make some fucking changes in my life because fuck, dude, that that is that is haunting. Right. All these changes that I make, all these decisions that I'm making now, they might seem inconsequential, fucking spending money recklessly, fucking getting drunk all the fucking time, 
doing shit, just dumb shit, right? Like, it's cool in your, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, but if you're still operating off that same fucking mentality when you're 80, bro, fucking sad life, man, sad life. At least that's what I'm thinking, right? And, you know, the whole point of taking a philosophy class or studying philosophy in general is to live the opposite of a sad life. I'm trying to live the good life, homie, right? And I'm not going to fucking be able to do so if I'm stuck with these fucking terrible, terrible ideas of, again, what it is to live a good life, what it is, what the world is in the first place, and the shitty operating system that I've developed mostly through the motherfucking schools to help guide me through that process, right? So, again, going back to that whole shit about, you know, pontificating, I'm not, man. Like, the last thing I want to do is fucking, I don't want to be the only one that quote unquote makes it, yo. Like, Fuck no. When I eat, we all eat, bro. If I make it, we all make it, right? And I know for a fucking fact that if I'm the one that's fuck, if I'm going through this shit, I'm not alone because this is a shared collective human experience, right? Some of y'all may be going to it through it at a less extent, at a, to a less extent, right? Some of y'all might even be fucking worse. Again, whatever the case, this ain't the fucking thirteenth step, right? We're just trying to. At least I'm just trying to recognize and be as accommodating to all people as possible in the hopes that doing so will, you know, provide them with just a little bit of philosophical insight that they could parlay into this sustained attitude of enjoyment that they come from living a life that they actually appreciate. Right. That I know at least that's the case for me. So when it comes to that as well, another thing that I've been tripping on is because I have, in fact, been looking through this shit through social media. I look at them hashtags and all that kind of shit. Right. And. I started realizing that, yo, on top of being afraid of sounding like I'm pontificating, I'm afraid of turning into one of these fucking wannabe Kim Kardashian ass motherfuckers, quote unquote influencers who think that they're fucking making a difference in the world just because they take half naked fucking photos of themselves and post it along with some inspirational quote. Right, bro, the existential, the haunt, the horror when I started realizing like, yo, what's up with the all these little fucking bullshit ass um, quote? Fuck, not fake. They're not fake, right? But damn, my biggest fear is that the shit that I'm posting for sure on the Instagram will appear to be like this just cheesy motivation because that's not what it's intended to be, bro. Like, I, I, I'm laughing at this because I struggle for in philosophy. I'm starting to realize that a lot of the deeply profound truths that I've at least uh, uh, that I've at least gotten to myself that I, I you know I sit on these truths and I'm like, holy fuck, dude, this is something that. Is going to radically alter my understanding of life. I wish I would have fucking learned it in elementary school, but fuck it. Be happy that you learned it now at 30, right? And that if you do get fortunate enough to live to your 80s, that you'll be able to apply it in such a way. But if you die at 31, or I'm not even 30 no more, so 32 I am now, right? So if you die at 33, oh no, God forbid, right? But at least you would have had that one beautiful year of living with these profound truths, right? That, by the way, to the bane of my existence, are so easily reduced to these trite fucking aphorisms, bro. And that's the whole point that was when I was tripping out on social media and becoming one of these fucking fake-ass influencers. Bro, two years worth of this fucking contemplation, and I'm telling you straight up, like, much of it can be reduced to dumb shit like, follow your bliss, just be happy, dance in the rain, all those kind of fucking yoga fucking hipster tote bag wearing motherfuckers who take these deeply profound understandings and insights of reality and reduce them to some shit that we all collectively look at and we cringe because of how gross this motivation is right so i was like fucking cycling through instagram with my you know the the ice nice underscore profe shout out right profile and i started asking myself like the fuck dude are you trying is this what you're trying to do is this what your fucking work is going to become? Because if that's the case, I'm telling you straight up, man, fucking put this microphone down, never open up that laptop or turn on this camcorder over here and record another fucking podcast again because that shit is just gross, right? Like, I'm not hating on those of y'all who will fucking fancy yourself as an influencer, but me personally, the dilemma became is what the fuck am I offering you all that is of any relevance because if if if, I, if I'm just gonna sit here and give you these fucking trite aphorisms, well, you fuck, dude, they're already out there on Instagram. Go find them, right? And better yet, you'll find them next to a fucking hot body chick or dude, right? And you won't have to worry about looking at some fucking loser philosophy professor recording in his fucking back room, okay? You'll get the 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 visual pleasure and the motivation that you need with these fucking influencers out there who already have 
a vast amount of reason I can ever possibly hope to do, right? So, again, if that's your whole fucking intention, me personally speaking to myself, if that's the end game, bro, just fucking dead it now because nothing of what you're saying is going to be of any importance to the people who are looking to you as a quote-unquote philosophy professor, right? Hoping that what you will have to offer them is something different, something important, right? So, as I was cycling through this, I came to this understanding like, yeah, you know what? There are people out there who are going to, dude, nothing of what I'm telling you is new. Nothing that I will ever tell you will be new, right? Um, in fact, there are people out there right now who will tell you the exact same thing that I'm going to tell you, perhaps in a better way, perhaps not, right? But I do know that as far as this personal podcast is concerned, and my class in general, again, just to parlay it to our discussion in the beginning of, the, uh, of, this, of this recording, I hope to offer it to you in such a way that can make a just a, even if just a little bit of actual change of importance in your life, right? So what I mean by that is simple. Think about school, right? I know these influencers, great. They're great. They're doing their thing. More, more, more power to them, right? Get that money, dog. It's fucking. It's, it's hard out here for a pimp, right? I'm not hating, but they're never gonna be able to bring you the insights on school, for instance, like me, someone who's been deeply enmeshed in academia, can, right? Um, they're not gonna be able to talk about ways in which that school system has failed us to such a degree that we now live in a world at least here in america i'm I'm sure elsewhere as well full of fucking broken people who have spent the majority of their life living off these terrible patterns of behavior that they've acquired in response to trying to deal with the socialization process that they had to experience through this compulsory education system that we call the united states public school system right and if I could teach just that much. I mean, then I'm fine. I've, I've, I've done the job because, you know, this shit, again, circling back, it's, it's, it, it's me talking to myself, bro. And if I'm fucking pissed off that it happened to me, you bet your fucking sweet ass that I'm going to be pissed off that it happened to you. You bet your fucking sweet ass that I'm going to be pissed off that it's happening to my daughter. And thus, the only thing that I can do is either sit here and fucking complain about it to myself or try to do something about it, which this podcast, right? At least for this particular lecture. Now, um, another thing I really, really wanted to get into when it comes to this lecture or rather this particular podcast is, you know, the role of recovery in allowing us to live a good life. Like, seriously, all this shit back here, man. Um, In case you've been wondering, this is all just side ideas that have come along as I have. For those of you listening just on audio, I have my fucking wall back here. It's full of sticky notes and writing and shit. It's basically just side notes, because obviously very tangential, that I've had in attempting to just flush out all of these ideas that I started having, again, about two years ago when I started realizing just how deficient I was as a person, right? And in my attempt to overcome it, I get these ideas that at one point, they still are. I'm still in the process of doing it, right? This book that I'm trying to write has actually turned itself into three, but even just this podcast, man, right? So this fucking all the 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 recovery you see it right there right like it's a fucking huge it's so huge in my life right i talked about it in further detail well i talked about it enough uh in, in in my previous podcast but i cannot emphasize how important it is to me right because i'm starting to realize it's not even recovery just from drugs bro you don't have to be addicted to drugs to be in the recovery of process i am trying to recover my entire existence yo my existence from this from tr- i'm trying to recover for myself right from this de- this this derealization that i undertook from years of just living life uh unsatisfied right and the only way that i could deal with that pain was to just depersonalize myself from it for so long that inevitably the depersonalization became the default mode it became the person driving the vehicle that i discussed in the previous uh, podcast right and I'm trying to take my life back from that motherfucker, yo, because that motherfucker is terrible. That motherfucker is bad. If you, when we get deeper into these le- these podcasts, that motherfucker is evil, yo. That Isaac that had been driving the vehicle, this meat vehicle here for so long, was a, is a terrible person. And that person is not going to help me live a good life. That person is not going to help me live a bad life, right? And the unfortunate part is, I don't know if you can see it here clearly, but I got relapse over here. That person is always present. That person is never going to go away. That quote unquote inner weak bitch of mine. I think about it as Voldemort when he's fucking finally dead at in uh, the eighth movie of the Harry Potter uh, series, right? Spoiler alert. 
But that little fucking gray thing that's just laying there like me, right? That's that fucking inner wit. That's that. That's that inner wit. That inner weak bitch of mine that I'm trying so desperately now to fucking reclaim my life from, right? That's that thing right there that was making the life decisions and um that had come to define my previous thirty years up until that point, right? So what you have over here then and what you have by way of the books that I'm inevitably hopefully going to be able to come up with through this podcast is just the process of attempting to recover my existence from that person in the hopes that doing so again, just hopefully I'll be able to squeak out a little bit of a fucking happy time while I'm here on this planet. There's a great tool song, man. This fucking tool song has resonated with me since I was 16 years old, right? Uh, The song itself is called Push, uh, Push It. Okay, and the lyric says, and I trade it all for just a little peace of mind. Right. Like, bro, that shit is deeply profound because it gets to this core of what I think we're all seeking as people, irrespective of your philosophical inclinations, irrespective of your ethnicity, your gender, your fucking sexual orientation, your political uh, affiliation. Like, no, dude, it doesn't fucking matter. None of that shit matters. What we're all looking for is a little bit of fucking peace of mind, a little bit of calm, a little bit of happiness, a little bit of a moment to be able to enjoy this experience that we call life. Right. It's part of the reason I'm firmly convinced that we get so caught up in these self-destructive patterns of behavior, because you know what? Fuck it, dog. Like I said before, getting drunk fucking feels good. Right. And in that feeling good shit, that's the unfortunately for me, at least this is the instance, the only happiness that many of us know, which, again, I guess is cool when you're 17. You're just a dumb fuck like myself who doesn't know anything about the world to begin with. Right. But inevitably. That shit gets old, man. The hedonic treadmill dictates that we're going to get tired of that shit inevitably. And when that time comes, it's going to take our happiness with it. We're no longer going to find happiness in the alcohol. In fact, we're only going to be drinking the alcohol just to fucking feel happy, just to get back to baseline happiness more specifically. Right. At least that was certainly the case with me. So, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to recover my life from that person, that person who did that kind of shit. And that's just one of the things that that motherfucking weak bitch Right. That still exists right here, right here in my heart and in my mind. Every motherfucking day I'm battling against that motherfucker. Right. But that's just one of the things that that motherfucker did to make my life terrible. Right. And every day that I succeed, every day that I conquer, every day that I overcome. Right. To use the more Nietzschean philosophy, the language of the Nietzschean philosophy, you know, the 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 self-destructive patterns of behavior that that weak bitch is trying to fucking navigate my life through. The stronger I become straight up, right, the the easier it's going to become for me to do so. It's never going to go away, but it will become easier for me to resist that urge to just get drunk, for instance, because, oh, I got stressed out at work today and now baby needs his bottle. Right now, I'm not trying to diminish you if you're still baby who needs his bottle. Right. But that was definitely fucking me. yo. I woke up one day and I was like, really, bitch, you need to fucking you need to get drunk because life gets hard. Like, how are you any different from a baby throwing a fucking temper tantrum? If the mommy's going to come along and say, like, here you go, baby. Here's your bottle. Right. That's fucking you, bro. You're a 30 year old man who's still fucking operating off this fucking infantile like behavior. Right. And it's not going to help you live a good life. Right. It's just not. So I'm trying to recover my fucking life from that infantile pattern of behavior so that I can, in fact, live a better life right to try to enjoy the time that i'm here i'd rather fucking live one fantastic fucking year of happiness of peace of mind of actual joy in my life right than another 50 of misery of fucking infantile like behavior right so hopefully if we get anything from at least this particular podcast but definitely from whatever else that it is that i happen to discuss later on in the future uh it's that it's it's the importance of recovering our existence because we all have it i'm telling you man that's one of the beautiful things about the uh uh, about about islam in general they have this great idea about jihad now jihad has unfortunately been co-opted by the you know the powers that be the institutional forces especially here in the united states government to make it seem as though it's this fucking quote-unquote it's not a quote-unquote it is a holy war right and the way that it's been subtly manipulated is to try to make it seem as though it's uh, trying to convert everybody into a, a Muslim, which there's part of it to that. Right. And, you know, by the way, before I continue, please do not get this twisted as a fucking as some sort of Muslim apology. Right. Fuck no. We'll talk all about that later. OK. I all religion in general, I think is fucking evil. So don't think that I'm just going to sit here and bash fucking Christianity, but give, you know, Islam or Judaism or all these other fucking Buddhism, bro. Buddhism out there killing motherfuckers now still to, uh, right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to give them a pass because that's, you know, what we supposedly lefties like to do. Right. 
like bash Christianity and give all these other religions a pass. Nah, that's not that's not what I'm trying to do. Right. But at the same time, I'm not going to completely dismiss the insights that religion has to offer. Yes. Even a godless heathen like myself. Right. Can understand that the religion there, there's a lot of truth in the, in the text. Right. Whether it be Christianity or in this particular ism or instance, rather Islam. Right. And the truth here, at least for the metaphor that I'm going to try to convey before I wrap this bitch up, is that the origination, I guess I should say, of the idea of jihad is how we all are in a personal holy war. Right. And I'm going to butcher the fuck out of it. I took this shit. And as an undergraduate in my introduction to Islam class, for those of you wondering, like, how the fuck does we know this shit? Th that only and just to be even more clear, I barely went to that fucking class. Right. I got like a D or some shit. I, I, it wasn't that low, but I barely passed. Right. Um, but I do remember learning how the meaning for, you know, in the, in, in the Muslim faith, at least in, this, in, in, in a very um, loose sense is a holy war within ourselves, right? And by the way, one of the people that I'm going to have later on in this podcast, inevitably, motherfucker, I, dude, you need to fucking, we need to get this shit going, okay? Um, he will do a much better job of explaining it because, well, he was, in fact, at one point or another, an actual Muslim, right? I can't attest to whether he is now or not. You can ask him on your own if you ever get a chance to meet him, right? But he was definitely raised in the Middle East and knows full well exactly what I'm talking about because he's talked to me about it before, Right? Um, but the idea is that, again, we're all in this kind of holy war with, within ourselves, right? And basically, I'll use a more relevant, not relevant because I'm not trying to dismiss the, you know, the, the insights of the Muslim faith, but I'll use one that's more relevant to me specifically. It's a meme that I saw recently of, a, of an idea that's allegedly, I don't know, it may be, maybe not, I don't know, I've never seen it, so I'm not going to say otherwise. I don't want to be that person that fucking cites Abraham Lincoln on the internet talking about how the internet is bad, right? I don't want to be that person. So I'm just going to say that the meme itself has credits this to a native american story which one doesn't even fucking say right but the idea is still nonetheless powerful is talking about a wolf and how the wolf there's there's two wolves that exist within us a good wolf and an evil wolf and the grand the grandson allegedly asks well which one wins ultimately in this battle right uh for power to which the, the elderly grandfather responds whichever one you feed more one of them of course being the the good wolf the person that wants you to get up off the couch and fucking do some shit with your life right the person who's telling you straight up, yo, you don't fucking need this drink to me to be fucking happy, right? The person who's telling you straight up, like, yo, you need to fucking better manage your finances because you're going to be 80 years old one day and you might fucking not have any cash left if you, con if you continue with these fucking uh, terrible, reckless spending habits, right? Or you can feed the other wolf, the quote-unquote bad wolf, who's telling you, nah, dog, it's all right. Fucking drink that alcoholic beverage. It's okay if you fucking get drunk today. Life is meaningless. Life, you know, life is fleeting. Who the fuck cares? So if you're here and none of it matters, you might as well get drunk and fucking enjoy the ride, right? And go ahead and fucking spend that cash because who, who cares, dog? Money comes and goes. You'll make more, right? You have the rest of your life to make more money. You can worry about that shit when you're older, right? That fucking evil wolf that's telling you, nah, bro, it's okay. Eat that fucking cheeseburger deluxe with a fucking side of, uh, uh, you know, donuts or whatever the shit case might be. And don't worry about going to the gym, yo. Like, fuck it, who cares, right? Let th this society must accept you for what you are, right? Like, nah, man. I'm, again, my personal understanding, just in case y'all are like, oh, he's personally attacking me. Fuck, no, I ain't even thinking about you. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> this is only half a joke, okay? But yeah, this going back to how that relates to the whole jihad thing is like, bro. This idea, again, it, it, circula it, it, it circulates human understanding of reality. It, we all have this war within us, right? So, again, it's it just a matter of, you know, wh what side are you going to fight on? What side are you going to choose to fight on? And to circle it even more further back, right, you could have been taught one way or another, you know, when you were younger. It didn't have to do nothing with religion. I could have I taught you this whole, the whole metaphor that I just did now without religion, right? And you could have still reaped the same benefits from it. Like, yo, you got to feed the one. You got to feed the energy, the spirit, the wolf. What the fuck ever, right? That is going to help you live a better life while you are here. Who the fuck cares what happens when you, when you leave this place? Because if you're not even happy here, then it's fucking all for naught, right? There was so much more that I wanted to talk about, and this ain't just some shit that I'm always saying because I know I like I have a terrible habit of fucking talking about like, oh, I'm gonna talk about all this today and all this tomorrow, right? Like, again, our my linear uh, understanding of time. That's not how it works. I'm gonna talk about all the little fucking sticky notes from the very first lecture, the very first podcast, right? Inevitably, okay. But we're gonna take a very circum uh, cir circuitous route to get there. Um, I had more that I want to talk about even just today, 
But unfortunately, my time is up because, again, I value your time. Your shit is important, right? And I don't want to take more than over an hour with these podcasts. Occasionally, maybe just a little bit minutes over, but, you know, more often than not, a little bit minutes under, which is where I am at today. So with that said, I hope you enjoy this podcast. I'm looking forward to bringing you so, so, so much more shit so you can fucking buy it, right? And help your boy rid himself of the constraints that have been put on me by this capitalist society that dictate that I have to go to my amazing, fucking amazing job, right? Just to pay the bills, okay? Uh, but we'll get there when we get there, yo. Until then, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, night, whenever the fuck you're hearing this, okay? And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Peace.